And I see we're closing in on 100 participants for the meeting, so that looks good too. Okay. That's great. And with that, I'll pass this forum to Samuel Basaran, and uh, uh, we're going to start the first plenary session today. Okay. Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Yes, we can oh, hear you. Wonderful. I, I am Jamal Basaran, Jamal Basaran from University at Buffalo, Department of Civil Structural and Environmental Engineering. Uh, it is my great pleasure to chair this keynote uh, session. Our keynote speaker is Professor Adrian Bejan from Duke University. Uh, he is very well known in the field of thermodynamics and he needs very little introduction. Uh, he's going to talk about freedom and evolution today and I will pass the mic to Professor Bejan. Oh, thank you very much for the introduction and also for the um, invitation to speak. I prepared a uh, recorded lecture of uh, 40 minutes, which will uh, leave enough uh, time for questions if you have any questions. So uh, let me see if I can manage to project uh, my presentation. Um, here it goes. You have to wait five seconds and it begins. <laughs> Welcome. This uh, lecture is a brief introduction to my new book, Freedom and Evolution, with a subtitle, Hierarchy in Nature, Society, and the Science. It is a broad area, um, too long for this uh, short lecture. Therefore, I reduced it to the essentials, uh, which are covered in the book, namely four topics. One is dynamics, then uh, freedom and evolution together, diversity and hierarchy together, and the science uh, evolving itself uh, in the direction of uh, more and more freedom. Um, so we start with the uh, thermodynamics, the, uh, the science queen. Uh, its laws are obeyed by uh, everything in uh, nature. And uh, the basic story of in fact, the origin of the subject is the idea that um, um, power is available from uh, cheating or power from fire. Uh, I made an icon of that. The so-called dynamic system is uh, one of the very many in this uh, blue domain. And uh, cheating from uh, fuel or from food, if you, if you think of animals, um, is converted partially into power. The remainder is necessarily dumped as heating into the environment. Now, uh, the drawing suggests uh, the flow of the lecture. In the blue, you have uh, not one, but many, many uh, contrivances. Uh, some very old, some are much newer. So evolution is already uh, part of the graphics of this uh, presentation. Now, the uh, complete picture of, um, of power from fire is uh, shown on, the, on this slide. The uh, power produced uh, in the uh, blue domain, meaning from the uh, conversion of heating into uh, work, that is uh, destroyed instantly by moving things on the surface of the earth. The moving destroyed or dis dissipates the power completely. So the complete picture is uh, represented by the uh, rectangle with a dashed uh, boundary. There is a heating coming in and then heating being rejected to the environment. For example, the cold sky, uh, if you think about the earth as uh, one of the entities residing in the, uh, in the um, a rectangular box, and, but because of the presence of uh, flow configurations in the blue, but also in the green, there is movement driven on the surface of the earth, movement in the horizontal direction. Uh, this, this is an icon of everything that moves on earth, air and oceanic currents, animals and vehicles, 
And uh, in other words, so the entire uh, geosphere, biosphere, social sphere is, uh, is in fact uh, projecting in front of us uh, images that change in time in a discernible reaction, meaning movies, movies, each movie with a plot that makes sense to the human observer. The, uh, the next uh, uh, main idea is uh, the presence of uh, these two concepts in uh, thermodynamics. Um, first of all, evolution literally uh, means uh, the changes that are occurring uh, with a discernible direction in time, changes in, in configuration. The uh, direction is discernible in the mind of the observer. All of science uh, is about the phenomena in the mind of the observer uh, that, uh, of course, uh, over time, they become codified as uh, concepts and laws and, okay, applications uh, in, uh, in the thicker and thicker books of science. Freedom is uh, the one that worked for the collection of uh, physical features that allow the uh, entity, let's call it a thermodynamic system, to change, to change its configuration. Without these physical features, uh, there is uh, no change, therefore no evolution. Uh, for that matter, no difference between uh, uh, now and tomorrow, which means no time and also no future. To account for um, this uh, new aspect of uh, the thermodynamics that we, uh, we uh, practice. I stated in 1996, they construct the law. I'll read it to you. For a uh, flow system to persist in time, this is the definition of uh, to live. Uh, it must evolve with freedom such that it provides a greater access. Um, let me explain. This is the, the physics definition of, uh, of life because in thermodynamics we already have the physics definition of death. It's called the dead state where the uh, being of a system where nothing moves. There's no, nothing, no flow, no, uh, nothing changes. Uh, the boundaries are not uh, uh, showing deformations over time and so on. So uh, the life state is the antonym, if you want, or the opposite of the dead state. Important here is uh, are the three words uh, shown in uh, bold letters, um, to live uh, with, uh, and then to change with freedom where the greater access. These, uh, these words uh, really mean one and the same thing, uh, which is uh, freedom itself, because without uh, the physical features that uh, allow changes, then uh, there is no life, and uh, meaning there is no movement, and also no access. I have here a, um, a, um, an example of uh, a laboratory uh, uh, demonstration of the evolution in time of a river basin. The, uh, from a time frame to time frame, the uh, architecture uh, is uh, changing, it is morphing, it is always um, tree-like or arborescent, but there is a direction in time, which you can show uh, through uh, measurements. It is toward, uh, uh, flowing more and more easily, meaning the water on this uh, horizontal area being driven by gravity, by uh, smaller and smaller peaks of, uh, of um, well, let's call it altitude. Uh, the green is really, um, sand originally of uniform thickness on uh, the uh, floor of a laboratory. And so uh, the uh, movie plot from left to right is in fact the time arrow, which is brought into thermodynamics by this uh, statement. One more thing, evolution, the concept is uh, as, as old as uh, science itself. It comes from the Latin verb evolvo evolvere, which uh, means to roll out, to roll forth. Uh, this, uh, this word um, um, makes the mind think of uh, the image of a childbirth. Everything that uh, uh, is born uh, or nascent uh, is due or it comes out of uh, mother nature. 
a uh, feminine uh, um, entity, uh, natura in uh, Latin means that. Uh, this is a, uh, a mother word that has uh, given uh, birth to many other words in, uh, in the language of science that we speak today. I mean uh, the word val, vulva, or uh, Volvo, the brand name in, uh, in the Swedish uh, automobile. All these uh, words have the same origin as evolution itself. Now, with uh, this uh, um, law of physics, uh, many researchers uh, today have, have shown that uh, it is possible to predict not only the uh, evolutionary designs that uh, have been observed and documented, but also uh, to predict the future of these designs uh, over time. This is a uh, panel of uh, the um, uh, designs that endow uh, all sorts of systems on Earth with locomotion, that is movement driven by power, um, swimmers, uh, runners, and flyers. You have here um, a surprising uh, agreement between the observed uh, uh, speeds of locomotion versus body sizes. The body sizes uh, cover a huge territory from uh, the housefly to, uh, to the biggest ships. This, uh, this um, um, uh, unification of uh, movers on Earth is a... Uh, is a drawing uh, coming from me that has been evolving over time. The ships are uh, the most recent addition. They show basically agreement uh, with the, the swimmers. Uh, the airplanes, they show, they appear to be deviating from the line of the flyers. Uh, more recently, they've been brought in line with the flyers, with the animal flyers by taking into account the fact that the density of, uh, of uh, the medium in which the uh, fastest airplanes are, um, are uh, traveling is uh, uh, sensibly lower than the density of the atmosphere uh, against which uh, uh, animal uh, flight is, uh, is designed. And so this success, um, which is the agreement between all these dots and the uh, theoretical lines shown here as uh, two parallel lines for flyers and swimmers. Uh, this success is accompanied by, um, by uh, a, uh, a cloud-like distribution of data, uh, of a diversity, if you will. Uh, very soon you'll see a blow up of this region of, uh, of the fastest uh, movers versus the body sizes. Uh, and um, that is uh, how uh, the next uh, idea uh, comes on the screen. Uh, the cloud itself uh, is about the diversity hand in hand with, uh, with the predictable trend. And this is a blow up of that uh, uh, right hand uh, uh, extremity of the previous drawing. We have the uh, body sizes. We have the speeds, and here you see in uh, each of these groups, flyers, runners, and swimmers, that the fastest, the fastest are not the biggest. The biggest uh, animals are somewhat slower uh, than, than, the, than uh, their uh, uh, fastest, uh, you know, relatives. And um, this um, hump has been used uh, by many, uh, is a, um, an argument that uh, the, uh, the general trend is incorrect. Uh, and the uh, slogan of that uh, particular uh, point of view is that the biggest are not the fastest. It turns out that, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the biggest are the fastest. Uh, what we have here as uh, coming from zoology are the maximum speeds. And of course, the maximum speeds uh, of animals have to do with the lifestyle of the animal. So the fastest animals, flyer, runner, or, or swimmer, are in fact the predators. The, uh, the really big animals uh, that um, are, are fast are not the fastest, are the, uh, 
the grazers, the, uh, the ones that move all the time and of course eat all the time. So the, um, uh, the, average, the, the, the speed average of the lifetime of the mover turns out to be uh, in accord with the, uh, with the pred prediction that uh, the trend is toward uh, greater speeds, average speeds, as the body size increases. Uh, you can see this very clearly if you uh, think about uh, the evolution of airplanes. Uh, we have uh, big uh, uh, commercial uh, jetliners that uh, are fast, but not the fastest, yet they fly all the time. They, they spend the, their lives almost entirely uh, flying uh, compared with, uh, with um, the, um, the lives of uh, fighter uh, uh, jets, while well, the jet fighters are um, spending most of their time uh, uh, hidden in the hangars uh, underground. So, uh, uh, in other words, just like the cheetah, the cheetah is uh, uh, mostly mostly at rest. Uh, the lion is mostly asleep. The house cat is mostly asleep. Yes, all of them are fast, uh, just like the sprinter in the 100 meter dash. Um, when, when the feeding time comes. Um, there is a diversity everywhere. No one uh, would, um, would uh, confuse the hummingbird with the albatross or the uh, house cat with the, with the lion. And uh, this diversity <laughs> has its own uh, uh, physics, uh, meaning physics, if you know it, then you, with that you can predict the diversity. You get to that idea if you make your drawings the way I do, I make them all the same size, you see? And so comparing the, uh, the cat with the lion, uh, we notice here that the cat has, is mostly belly, uh, small legs. The lion is showing uh, more legs as opposed to, uh, to, uh, to belly. And the elephant is uh, even uh, more exaggerated in the, the uh, direction of greater legs. It turns out that uh, with physics and, of course, the mechanics of, uh, of the uh, lifting organ, which is, in this case, the legs or the wings here or the, uh, the undulating tail in the case of the swimmer, the mechanics of, uh, of this uh, um, um, periodically uh, flexing uh, lifting organism uh, calls for uh, this uh, 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 relationship between the uh, body fraction occupied by the lifting organ uh, in the entire size of the um, of the uh, of the mover. Uh, the kind of uh, comparison and uh, aha that I showed here for uh, uh, animal movers <coughs> is uh, available also for. Uh, for, for us, uh, the uh, many, many specimens of the Homo sapiens. Um, if you look closely, um, in fact, this is well documented, the, uh, the body uh, configuration of the West African type, which is uh, on the left, is slightly, slightly uh, different than the uh, configuration of the European body on the right-hand side. The main difference, the first one that uh, I brought to light in my work with this uh, constructor law is that the uh, center of mass of the uh, West African uh, uh, type is slightly higher than the uh, center of mass of the European um, uh, type. This, um, about 10 years ago, uh, I showed was responsible for the uh, uniform uh, success or dominance, if you will, of uh, the West African uh, athlete and uh, sprint uh, versus the the total dominance of the European body type in the in the the in the, in the uh, sprint in the, in water meaning in swimming. The uh, interesting um, um, uh, conclusion with regard to the diversity that's apparent if we look at the uh, human. Uh, population on the globe today is to, uh, to ask uh, what happened in between from left to right. Well, obviously, uh, there must have been uh, mixing or interbreeding 
with uh, with another pipe that had the effect of uh, lowering the um, the central mass of the result. And that uh, interbreeding happened uh, in the history of uh, migration of Homo sapiens out of Africa. Uh, it started the first time, the first migration was uh, one and a half million years ago. Uh, it coincided with the adoption of fire. Uh, pay attention, a big move in the, the empowerment of the Homo sapiens uh, gave uh, a, a, a green light to uh, step-wise greater uh, migration on the globe. That the first migration was uh, followed by uh, by the second, which coincided with the adoption of clothing. Uh, at that time, uh, Homo sapiens uh, uh, moved uh, out of Africa in the direction uh, uh, north and uh, and east, meaning uh, the Middle East. Uh, other hominids, such as the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, uh, moved. Uh, uh, in the same direction and spread all over the Middle East and uh, Europe and, uh, and Asia. And then uh, with the advent of boating, another big jolt uh, toward the uh, easier movement on the globe, there was uh, the first interbreeding between uh, the Homo sapiens and the, um, and the Neanderthals that uh, uh, generated uh, a, a new population of Melanesians and uh, Australoids. Uh, and then a uh, second interbreeding happened between uh, the Melanesians and the Neanderthal uh, as well. And then finally, 30,000 years ago, the uh, third interbreeding between uh, the European type and, uh, and the Neanderthal, which uh, led to the East Asian type. Uh, this is how the modern humans uh, exit this particular uh, slide to the right and uh, enter the kind of uh, history that, uh, with which we are, we are most familiar. Most of the history of, uh, of humanity is about the past, uh, uh, past 10,000 years. You have here um, all the breakthroughs in, uh, in uh, technology, uh, science, uh, transportation, uh, uh, up on top of uh, the uh, explorers who, uh, who uh, are famous for having spread the uh, uh, people all over the globe, and the four types, how they evolved from left to right by continuing this interbreeding um, tendency. And uh, today, again, we're exiting the screen to the right, where, in fact, uh, many, many, uh, as well as uh, types or uh, individual specimens of uh, the uh, one species that I call the human and machine species. This is the, uh, the, the reality uh, shown here uh, graphically with, uh, with the uh, image of a uh, naked, uh, naked man, then uh, naked man with a uh, nature-inspired tool, and these days, naked man with the tool and with the uh, next or future tool um, generated by the human mind. This is the, uh, let's say, the, the add-on due to artificial intelligence. Uh, the uh, important observation to make here is that uh, in evolution, what works is kept. The uh, wrench did not make the <laughs> naked hand obsolete. The, um, uh, this, uh, let's call it the intelligent arm, <laughs> will never make the plumber's wrench obsolete. You see, so in evolution, what works is kept. The uh, diversity of uh, the human and machine uh, uh, species is even more evident if we look at uh, what uh, each of us carries uh, in our brain. Uh, this is a graphic of uh, how that evolution has happened in the domain of engineering science. The past uh, 300 years, or mostly 200 years, um, what well, used to be uh, um, mechanics, mechanics mechanisms dating back to antiquity uh, became uh, um, uh, important and also uh, companions of newer, newer um, um, ideas. Well, the civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical, 
chemical, and so forth. And along the way, during this movie of uh, the environment of the uh, human and machine specimen, what worked was kept. Electrical engineering obviously did not illuminate mechanical. Uh, these uh, these uh, new ideas uh, work hand in glove with uh, everything else that preceded them as good ideas. Uh, the diversity that I just illustrated is uh, not random. It is organized into hierarchies. We get this um, next idea by looking uh, at, frankly, anything that's, uh, uh, that means population on, on, on the globe today. Here is the population of uh, models of uh, airplanes uh, versus uh, on the axis of their ear, ear uh, when uh, each model was adapted. On the ordinate is the size of the uh, flying um, body. Uh, obviously, uh, this is a, uh, a hill uh, or a mountain, the crest of which is rising over time. The biggest models are joined, uh, say, a decade later by even bigger models. Uh, but that's the uh, trivial observation. The subtle is that at any particular time during one given decade, the new models, the new models are arriving in all sizes, small and large. And uh, even more subtle is that the new models that arrive uh, are such that the small are many, they're all new, small are many, and the big are few. And uh, that is, uh, uh, called hierarchy. It's more uh, evident if we look at the, uh, at, uh, at the, uh, all the flyers uh, beginning with, uh, with, with the birds and of course uh, um, pterodactyl. The point is that uh, uh, in a two-dimensional plot of, uh, of the population size versus body size, qualitatively, there is a straight line on a logarithmic plot, a descending line from the many small to the few large. In other words, the design in nature, the organization of flow systems uh, happens, it just happens in this way, hierarchically, not in one size. And why? Why is this? Once again, because of physics. Uh, and the answer comes uh, uh, as a uh, kind of a two punch uh, move in a boxing uh, match. The first punch is economies of scale. You can show with pencil and paper as a homework problem that uh, a stream of water that flows, uh, one stream of water that flows through two parallel pipes of equal size. Uh, flows uh, a lot more easily through a single pipe that's uh, more voluminous, uh, a single pipe that has the same volume as the original uh, two pipes. In other words, the change in flow configuration toward flowing more easily is from two to one. That's economies of scale. You can uh, write the equivalent problem by thinking of um, uh, two small bodies, uh, okay, two barges uh, on a river uh, being pulled against drag. Uh, the barges are loaded with uh, coal versus a single barge that's bigger carrying uh, the total load of the first two. You can show that the power required to uh, drag the, the big one is considerably smaller than the power required to drag the, uh, the, the previous two. So the change toward easier flowing uh, from physics is from uh, two to one. And if this is the tendency in nature to flow more easily, then why, uh, why is it or why was it that uh, not everything that's moving on the landscape is big? The reason is that uh, the flow on the landscape is, uh, is not from one point to another point, as in, uh, say, uh, 
the simplest problems of geometry, uh, it is between uh, one point and an area. The direction of the flow doesn't matter. It is uh, because it's, it's about the fact that the point is one and the area uh, means an infinity of points or between a point and another infinity of points called volume. And for the flow to cover the, the infinity of points, well, that flow must uh, uh, have access to smaller and smaller and smaller pockets of territory between the, uh, the bigger territories that have been served or wetted or swept by, by the big movers anticipated or recommended by uh, uh, economies of scale. So we arrive in this way at hierarchy. Uh, another word for hierarchy or the natural uh, emergence of, the, of hierarchy is called organization uh, and is, or coalescence of uh, living things or movers. You see that in, uh, in this uh, photograph, that I put two photographs, uh, seagulls on the roof of, uh, of a cottage uh, on the uh, seashore uh, facing the breeze. They, uh, they do two things, actually the three things. First, they, they come together. Uh, second, they face, they face the wind uh, the same way. Third, meaning that each of the sailing birds is, uh, is uh, feeling a uh, relative time from the, from the wind that swept uh, downstream and that push from behind makes the, uh, the trailing bird uh, a, uh, a lazier worker in its legs, uh, meaning it has to do less work to stand up straight in the wind. Uh, here, the upper photograph is about uh, cranes, the way that they are uh, oriented uh, when not uh, working, oriented in a strong breeze. The, the front of the crane is, uh, is this one, the one loaded with a weight, meaning the, the beak of the uh, crane bird is uh, on the left, just as it was uh, in the lower photograph. This kind, this hierarchy or organization is uh, on display everywhere. The movement of people on an area such as the Atlanta airport, few large and many small. The one large is the train, the many small are the pedestrians on the concourses. Uh, this growing, uh, Atlanta airport is a, an icon of uh, the natural uh, emergence of the city block with uh, walking uh, perpendicularly to the smallest alley. Uh, freight on a larger area moves the same way. The same freight is uh, being uh, uh, vehicled on the area by few large uh, uh, trucks and many smaller trucks uh, proceeding uh, transversely. The so-called food chain is really the co coexistence of a uh, few large uh, uh, movers with uh, very many movers that cover the area in the other direction. And uh, the biggest example of this type of a hierarchy emerging uh, naturally on Earth is uh, the movement of humanity on the globe. This is the uh, air travel 20 years ago, uh, illustrated by NASA in terms of um, the uh, measured the condensation trails behind all flying aircraft. Uh, you see where the flying is going on. That is where the red, the red is the uh, the heart uh, for the two chambers of uh, air travel. The whole, the whole globe is, uh, is traveling. Uh, and uh, so the movement is hierarchical. And that means that the fuel consumption is hierarchical as well. Uh, this hierarchy was not uh, dictated by uh, the uh, general secretary of the Communist Party. This happened naturally. And uh, with that idea, we can now uh, admire the uh, uh, another version of the facts. What it here are facts about economics, hand in hand with uh, with the technology of, uh, of driving movement on on the planet. Fuel is being burned, of course. Uh, from fire comes power, from power comes movement, 
And uh, you see here that uh, annual fuel use is uh, essentially proportional to annual wealth, known as uh, gross domestic product. And so the conclusion then is that there is a rough one-to-one -one proportionality between annual fuel use and annual wealth. We've already established that fuel use uh, emerges hierarchically naturally. That means that the hierarchical distribution of wealth on the globe uh, is hierarchical, is, is natural as well. So the natural phenomenon that gave birth to, uh, to hierarchy and area travel is, uh, is the same physics, the same physics that, uh, that makes uh, wealth hierarchy um, um, unstoppable, if you will, uh, on the globe. The, uh, the subtle uh, point about this graph is the prime arrow of all the dots that occupy this uh, yellow band. All the dots are uh, racing upward. Listen to government reports every year. Uh, doesn't matter which country you're uh, uh, concerned with. Uh, governments are interested in uh, greater wealth or increased GDP for their, for, uh, their population. And that means, of course, uh, uh, necessarily an increase from year to year in uh, fuel consumption. Um, so there's a time arrow, which is as old as uh, the Homo sapiens. It, uh, in this case, uh, this panel is about the evolution from uh, the adoption of fire to power generation today. Um, I made it uh, in two dimensions uh, to show how the um, Acquisition of, uh, of uh, fuel, fuel for, for heating uh, proceeded uh, through social organization from hunting and gathering to all the way to, to the present era. On the abscissa, uh, the same story, but in the language of, uh, of uh, social organization from band to tribe all the way to uh, uh, state and uh, global uh, or, uh, constructs today. Uh, the time arrow is toward the uh, you know, increase in population, advancement, wealth, uh, freedom, and of course, in the same direction, uh, science itself is uh, evolving. The population is increasing. The individuals, uh, of course, uh, become uh, more and more numerous. They become uh, less and less visible. And unfortunately, uh, the single individual in this direction becomes less and less important. And that brings me to the concluding um, idea, which is that the science as a construct of the human mind, an empowering construct, uh, is uh, itself a evolutionary design evolving in this uh, direction of time that I just illustrated. Uh, I, uh, I have a way to, uh, uh, to illustrate that with the evolution of thermodynamics itself over the past 200 years from its origins, uh, originally caloric theory and the mechanics, and then um, 150 years ago, thermodynamics, um, almost, uh, what, uh, 60 years ago, the, uh, the um, uh, corralling of uh, the long lost child of caloric theory called heat transfer back into thermodynamics and, uh, and then uh, today, meaning several 20 years ago, bringing in uh, uh, the evolutionary designs, the designs that in fact are responsible for the thickness of every single thermodynamics book. Every thermodynamics book is about contrivances that have been uh, getting better over time, uh, techniques for producing power from fire or producing uh, 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 heating and cooling from, from, uh, from the same fire. Uh, those drawings are in the books. Well, they've been evolving. They've been evolving over time. And now with uh, these three uh, uh, roots into the uh, very fertile ground of human ingenuity, we have a dynamics that's, uh, uh, I think, much, much a better position to advance forward. Now, there's a subtle uh, story that goes with the movie uh, that uh, this uh, drawing, uh, uh, and this drawing is like the poster for a movie. Um, and it is that uh, 
the bytes from left to right is uh, punctuated by, uh, by individuals. Individuals had ideas. You see their names in the better books that have been written. You see the uh, places where they produced, um, you know, Renaissance in Italy, or uh, um, obviously uh, uh, steam engine makers in uh, Britain, um, and you know the examples. Uh, these are very special places. These were places where the, the individuals were not only uh, 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 free enough, uh, free enough to, uh, to, to move and to talk, and to speak, uh, also wealthy enough to move, <laughs> to talk, and to speak, and to write, and uh, to publish. But uh, these are, in particular, these are places where individuals were, uh, were uh, encouraged, encouraged to come up with, uh, with ideas. And so, uh, from left to right, the uh, evolution of science is uh, speaking of the importance of freedom in in the uh, march toward performance of any evolutionary design. My uh, concluding slide is uh, of the opposite kind, which is, uh, this doesn't require any, uh, any explanation, except that the punchline is that <clears throat> marching columns do not climb peaks. With that, I thank you for your attention. Once again, on the left-hand side, I. Uh, summarize the uh, main uh, words of this presentation. These are words that uh, um, uh, traditionally are not spoken in physics, they are not spoken in uh, thermodynamics. Uh, my argument is that they should be spoken and uh, the speaker should be encouraged to uh, come up with even better ways of, uh, of speaking. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Bejan. Now we have uh, some questions. First question is from uh, Jose Cordiero. Uh, can you please ask your question, Jose? You have to unmute your uh, screen. Um, okay, I am not hearing from Jose. Okay, then we will go to the second question. Second question was from Gabor Balassi. Is Gabor online? Yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, hello, good morning. So uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Bejan for the uh, very interesting talk uh, that I was hoping to hear uh, some someday. So this was great. Um, I was thinking about the scaling between um, the speed uh, and the body mass and uh, realizing that uh, maybe that could extend to lower uh, organism masses. Um, and just thinking of uh, bacteria or uh, single-celled organisms, their body masses are in the picograms. And if I remember correctly, I think the lowest body mass in the graph was 10 to the minus sixth kilogram, which is like a milligram. So I was wondering how that extends or are there data um, that could be plotted and does anything change because when we get to really low sizes then um, we get to the range of low Reynolds numbers and for really small cells maybe uh, Brownian forces uh, start to matter. So that's my question. What, look, what does it look like at the much lower masses? Okay, well that's a good point. Um, the uh, the uh, kind of work that you um, envision uh, has been done. And uh, I think that the key author uh, in that direction is uh, Jeffrey West. Um, so if you look at his uh, publications of uh, 10, 10, 10 to 15 years ago in that range, you'll, you'll see this. Uh, um, his interests have been precisely in this direction of um, extending the, um, the power to predict um, this um, uh, basically unifying design. Um, but you're right, uh, with the changes in the size, the flow regime uh, is replaced by another flow regime. And uh, but that's a, uh, a secret that you know, but uh, once you know the secret, then the formula for uh, answering is the same. Um, 
So, uh, meaning there are no more vortices. Uh, there is another kind of drag, uh, but, uh, but then uh, the argument is the same. What I like about uh, everything that I showed you is that um, the presentation appears to be uh, diverse and uh, uh, with multiple languages and uh, directions, but in fact, there's just one story. <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost funny once you realize that uh, uh, every single thing that involves has this, has this, is a movie with the same plot. <clears throat> Toward the, obviously, uh, greater access for, for, to, for what flows, access to what? To the available space, because clearly everything is spreading, or for that matter, everything, the, the other thing that's not spreading, the other, everything is being collected. Think about, uh, say, um, the survival of a human society. Uh, yes, we're spreading, we're getting whatever, more affluent, but at the same time, uh, our grain comes from the surface into, uh, into the flour mill and then all the way into the uh, bread the store. Um, oil too is extracted in three dimensions from underground from a volume to one point. It's just like exhaling air from the uh, thorax. So uh, we're not talking about the biomimetics here. <laughs> we're talking about predicting all these flows uh, from uh, a single hunch, okay? That's the beauty that uh, I recognize in this kind of a discussion. Um, okay, so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, next question is from Dr. Klaus Jaffe. Klaus, are you online? Yes. Uh, nice to hear your talk, Adrian. I was following your work for a while, and it's beautiful. I have a problem with your uh, with the concept of freedom. I think it's very important that when you try to operationalize to, to work with it, it's very difficult. I wonder what your definition of freedom is in this thermodynamic concept, uh, context. Well, I define freedom as the collection of uh, physical, physical properties. You can make drawings of these uh, physical features that endow the uh, thermodynamic system, the entity, with uh, the ability to, to change. For example, in the uh, earliest example of this kind, the piston and cylinder apparatus of uh, the reciprocating uh, steam engine, the, uh, the system, the amount of steam is changing its volume. Why? Because the piston is not locked. The piston has, the piston has uh, one degree of freedom, which is the position of the piston in the cylindrical chamber. That's the simplest and it's the oldest. Uh, now, uh, uh, jumping to uh, today's uh, design of, uh, say, uh, water flow underground here in my, my city, meaning a sewage or, uh, or um, um, rainwater, the, uh, the city has the ability, <laughs> it gives itself the ability to, to change everything, the location of uh, one duct, the size of the duct, the number of uh, uh, ramifications of one duct. So uh, there is uh, freedom galore. Even more in uh, in the um, in the architecture that uh, moves stuff on the surface, the the roads, the streets. You can change not only what I said previously, meaning locations and sizes. You can change the uh, the surface uh, condition, meaning asphalt or gravel, and on and on and on. Uh, so uh, yes, freedom. Uh, freedom is a, a very important word. It is a good thing that is uh, uh, present uh, uh, frequently in the narrative of politicians, uh, but uh, it is physics because uh, if the politicians did not have uh, uh, the physical means to change things, there would be no uh, police, no uh, city, you see, coming from Greek. So the, the concept of, uh, of um, uh, okay, civilization, the living in the city is, uh, is rooted in the ability to make changes so that uh, the group, yes, the group uh, flows, which means lives more easily, better from uh, year to year. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Our last question is coming from Tia Eberal. I will stick to the time. Tia, Hi, are you on? 
Hi. Yes, I am. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bijan. Uh, my question is about uh, the word hierarchy, how you're using the word hierarchy, because uh, to me, hierarchy implies uh, a ranking, that there's the subordinate and uh, and superiors. And uh, but the way you're you're using it, I, I saw you just seem to be talking about trends of um, comparison of uh, of different things. So, well, uh, I uh, like many people in science, uh, for lack of uh, uh, a better word, I um, I go to to Greek Greek. So hierarchy means a chief priest. Uh, there are many uh, parishioners, obviously all uh, all um, looking up to the chief priest. There are also many prelates also looking up to the chief priest. Uh, that's uh, the, the kind of organization that happens naturally, not only in uh, religion, but in, uh, for example, uh, obviously society, business, including sports. Uh, a team has a hierarchy. A team on the playing field is uh, <laughs> far from moving randomly. Um, and um, and that also is true for military uh, organization. Uh, every the university is hierarchical, uh, and also loaded with uh, terminology from uh, from uh, from from the church. But so, how is fuel hierarchical? The what? Fuel? How is fuel hierarchical? Uh, the burning of fuel is hierarchical. The bigger movers are few. Uh, the smaller movers are many that means the bigger movers are burning more fuel on the globe uh, than uh, the uh, the many smaller uh, that's a hierarchy of uh, movement just but like that doesn't make the chief that the the bigger ones are not the chief uh, priest i uh i uh I use the hierarchy the word uh, for lack of a better word uh, okay. and i relied on uh, on uh, the history of language that I happen to know. Um, maybe, maybe you have another, another um, word. That, I mean, a single word that's better than hierarchy, where maybe uh, it, it might be less controversial. I'm not suggesting, as I said in my presentation, that uh, the uh, unequal distribution of burning of fuel on Earth was not dictated by uh, by uh, a dictator. Okay, it just happened. In fact, uh, uh, those of our generation witnessed this sort of uh, burst or sudden birth of this uh, hierarchy in air travel uh, during deregulation in the early 1980s. Deregulation first in the US uh, uh, air traffic system and then uh, almost overnight in, uh, in, in, in Europe, Europe as well. Um, so uh, that's the way uh, with the um, okay unequal distribution of uh, of things that uh, move, meaning live on Earth. We see it uh, after a sudden downpour, the uh, the water, the rainwater, um, has this tendency to configure itself to evacuate uh, the plane uh, more easily, which means faster uh, to the sea. Professor Adjian, I'm sorry, we have to uh, end here, we have to go to our next speaker. Thank Please. you very much for your lecture.